Okay, I call this the picture perfect card trick. Okay, so what you need for this is you need uh, 12 random cards chosen by the spectator. Um, also, you do need a phone or some device to take a photo. Okay. A photo that you, electronic digital photo, one that you can look at right after taking the photo. Okay, so the cards can be um, table washed or mixed as much as anyone would like. Okay, and then you can even hand these to the spectator to choose 12 random cards. Okay, so maybe I'll just put out, see the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, very good. Set aside the other cards, okay? And then you can have the spectator uh, table wash these as well, okay? And when they're content with the mixing of the cards, go ahead and just have them hand them to you. Now, it's going to be the case that you and the spectator will see the cards, uh, which is fine. So you can kind of ribbon spread them on the table. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a photo of the cards, okay? And so you'll see me doing that. I'll go ahead and show you, you know, what I'm doing here. Okay, there you go. Took a photo of the cards. So you can set aside your camera for now and then go ahead and just gather up the cards and explain to the spectator, uh, since they saw the cards and we saw the cards, we probably should mix them. Okay, so this is some preliminary mixing that's good to do since people have seen the cards. Um, have them dictate the stacking and all of the options that we'll give them throughout this. So uh, left on right, okay, that's fine, okay. Now from here you can, as a note to the performer, uh, you can perform a Charlier shuffle. That's what this is. And I can include a link in the description below. Now, if you rather not perform that, that's fine. It's not necessary to do that. An alternative would be to just have the spectator cut the cards wherever they like and complete the cut, okay? So that's an alternative to the Charlier shuffle. Now from there, uh, we're going to just perform a Klondike shuffle. Now this is where you take the top and bottom cards off as one, okay? just like that. And now the real mixing begins completely decided by the spectator. Okay, so explain to the spectator that we're going to deal out the cards from left to right into equal size piles, but the spectator will actually decide how many piles we use. Okay, furthermore, even though we'll be dealing out from left to right, the spectator will be free to stack the piles from left to right or right to left. It really will be their choice, okay? Now at this point in my performance, um, I could use a die roll to decide how many piles to deal out and we could even use a coin toss to decide whether we stack from left to right or right to left. Um, I thought I would spare you that, but just know that all of the choices that I'm giving you are genuine choices. So nothing that I'm going to say is a fib or a lie or misdirection in any way. So you tell the spectator, well, we're going to deal these out into equal size piles. Well, in the case of 12 cards, I guess we would need to deal out into two, three, four, or maybe even six piles for the piles to be equal size. So which of those would you like? Okay, and now they can freely choose any of those. So let's say they say uh, two piles. You say, very good. And so you just deal them into two piles. How would you like these stacked? Left on right or right on left? Right on left, okay. Would you like to do any more of those? One more, left on. Left to right shuffle, okay, very good. You want left on right this time? Okay, very good. Would you like to deal out into three or four or six piles? You would, into four, okay. One, two, three, four. Now, how would you like to stack these from left to right or right to left? Left to right, okay, fine, that's great. Um, would you like to have them dealt out into three or six? Three, okay, that's fine, one, two, three. How would you like these stacked? Left to right or right to left? Left to right, okay. Um, would you like to deal out into six? You would, okay, that's fine. It's your choice, we, we can do it or not do it. Just make sure I'm going, um, looking at the camera, <laughs> make sure I'm not going 
off of the edge here. I'm not doing it very straight, but um, how would you like these stacked? Right to left? Be sure. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. Now, would you like me to deal out into piles, further deal out into two, three, four, or six piles? It's really your choice. You do. H uh, how many piles? Four? Okay. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. How would you like these stacked? Left or right? Okay, very good. Okay. Now, a note to you as the performer, you can have the spectator decide to have the cards dealt out into two, three, four, or six piles as many times as they like. And you can mix and match those dealing out. So you can do three piles, then six, then two, then four, then three, then six, then four again, or whatever you would like, or whatever the spectator would like, okay? So let's assume the spectator is content with the mixing, because if you think about it, there is no way on this green earth that you could have known what they would ask for. Dealing that into two piles or three piles or four piles or six piles. In addition to that, you could not possibly know if they would choose to have the cards stacked from left to right or right to left. And the fact is it makes a difference to the ordering of the cards. It genuinely changes the ordering of the cards. Okay. Now, despite all of those random choices made by the spectator, to finish, all we do is you just Klondike pairs to the table. Put a pair there, a pair here, a pair there. Okay, so we should have six pairs. Okay. And now, to finish, what you do is, now you have your camera, right, with the picture on it. There is the picture of the cards from the very beginning. Um, so what you do is you now turn around with your back towards the spectator and towards the cards, so you don't see the cards anymore. So you turn around and you tell the spectator, okay, I'm going to use a picture of the cards that we originally began with to try to divine what these pairs of cards are, okay? You have this right in front of you and now you're facing away from them. And then the spectator, what they do, they simply turn these face up, like so. So they turn all of these face up. Now this won't mean anything to anybody right? Except you in a minute, okay? Now with your back still turned on them, I'll show you what you'll see, okay? Now you won't be facing this way, right? Because now you're facing the cards. You're facing away from the cards. Okay, so all you need to do to state perfectly the identities of all six pairs now, the probability of guessing those correctly is so small, it's a tiny probability, okay? So, the spectator has turned these over. They're looking at these cards on the table. You're looking at your screen. And you would just say, well, uh, I believe, let me bring this up so you can see it a little bit better. There we go, okay. So, this is what I'm looking at. And I'm looking at the first two cards. Do you see on the far left, the first two cards over here? I see a nine of clubs and a six of hearts. So I would tell the spectator, hmm, I believe there is a nine of clubs and six of hearts in one of the piles. So one of the pairs is a nine of clubs and six of hearts, okay? Is that true? It is indeed. There it is. With you still looking at your magical photo here, I would now go over to the next pair. You're just reading them in pairs from left to right. So we've already done nine of clubs, six of hearts. That's done. Now we're looking to the next pair, which is a four of hearts and a seven of diamonds. So I would just simply state that. I said, well, I'm kind of getting a feeling from this photograph that one of the other pairs is a four of hearts and a seven of diamonds. Is that true? And then you wait for confirmation from the spectator. And they're going to look at the cards on the table and say, yes, indeed, <laughs> there is a four of hearts and seven of diamonds. Okay. And now you look at your magical photo again. Now you go one pair over, it's a couple of twos. It's a two of spades and a two of diamonds. And so you just state those and say, well, 
I'm getting a feeling that we actually matched um, card values in the case of a couple of twos. I think it's a two of spades and a two of diamonds. Is that true? And then the spectator will confirm, uh, yeah, okay, you've gotten three out of six so far. And then you just look at your magical photo again. And now we're over here to a couple of jacks, which is kind of nice. That was just randomly dealt out, by the way. So a jack of clubs, a jack of hearts. Spectator will look and say, yes, there is a jack of hearts, jack of clubs. Uh, there's a king of hearts and an eight of diamonds. Is that true? And the spectator will say, yes, it is true. And finally, you will just read off the last pair. So eight of spades and seven of spades. Okay, is there one? And then you wait for the spectator to say, yes, there is. Okay, and then you can turn around and just watch the rise be as big as saucers. And they're going to wonder how in the world did you do that? Okay. Well, how did we do that? None of this is misdirection. None of this is false. So you truly do begin with 12 random cards. It doesn't matter what they are. Okay. Okay. Now we're not going to go through the whole thing again, but I'm going to tell you the structure along the way. Uh, if you follow the steps I showed you, you can do this every time. Okay, so we need 12. Now, I'll just put out 12 so we have something to look at. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, there we go. So we have a packet of 12 cards, okay? Now, when we took the photo, now it's important to be able to see what are called the pips, you know, see the identity of the cards. So you take a photo. Now, the important thing is we will be viewing this as an AMP. That stands for adjacent mirrored pairs on my channel. Okay, so if you want to learn more about that, there's dozens of videos that talk about that. But the bottom line is, in the end, when we set out pairs, it's going to be the very pairs that we see right here. You just, from the top, pick the top pair, then the next pair, the next pair, and so forth. Okay, so because of the mathematical procedures that we'll be using, those are the very pairs that we'll be setting out face down at the end, okay? And so you'll be able to just read those off from your picture, okay? Absolutely amazing. Well, how can we do that? Well, if this is an AMP, um, as you can learn on my channel, if you deal out such a structure into two piles with random stacking, it becomes a two cycle. Now this is a cyclic construction. So those very pairs that we looked at are now in a cyclic relationship. Once you have a cyclic packet, you can surely a shuffle it or randomly cut it. It won't hurt a cyclic organization. Okay. Now, please understand, I, I'm not giving you all of the underlying mathematics and explanation here because I've done it throughout my channel and some of it takes a bit of explanation. That's why there's many videos on these topics. Uh, but I'm just giving you kind of a highlight or overview of things. So it's cyclic now. Because of that, you can perform a Charlier shuffle or random cutting. To change a cyclic packet, or structure to a mirrored packet, we do this. Okay, we a Klondike shuffle is one way to do it. Just to tell you another way to do it, if you don't like the Klondike shuffle, is to just deal out half the cards. So I'm giving you an alternative way of doing it, dropping the red. In fact, you can give them a, a choice here. Would you like left on right or right on left? Because either one will convert it to a mirrored structure. Okay. Now, what that will mean then, now you have to realize I did things multiple times here. <laughs> I've done multiple conversions. You only need to do either the Klondike or this 50% dealing, okay? I did a Klondike in the presentation, so if you prefer that, stick with that. But what will happen is the outer cards, because the packet is in a mirrored relationship, that means the outer cards are one of the pairings that we saw at the beginning. Same thing here, ace and the six king and the ace, seven and a jack, two and a five, ace and a 10. So those will be the very pairings that we're going to reveal at the end and that you can read off of your photo, okay? So, but once again, realize that I did a couple of conversions, 
right? So this isn't really a mirrored structure from the two cycle we had a moment ago because I did two conversions to a mirrored structure. In fact, if anything, it would be back to a two cycle again. But anyway, setting that aside, okay? Um, and now, because it's mirrored, you have the stay stack principle. And I'll add a link in the description below. But what this allows you to do is for each divisor of the packet size, here it's 12, you can deal the cards into that many piles from left to right, and then you can stack the piles from left to right or right to left, and it will preserve the mirrored organization of the cards, which means it doesn't hurt anything. It moves things around. Things are genuinely being moved around. But the fact that like this card way up here is related to this one here, it's one of the one of our special pairings, won't be hurt. Okay. And so you can deal into two piles, three piles, four piles, or six with random stacking from left to right or right to left. As many of those as you like. You can do hundreds of each if you had the time and patience, and as well as the spectator. <laughs> and then when they're content that there's just no way anyone could know where things are, which is absolutely true. There's no way unless you're somehow able to track all of that, which would be nigh impossible for an ordinary human. You just finish by Klondike shuffling pairs to the table. And so these will be the very pairs that we'll be able to just easily read off of our photo that we took. Now, I didn't take a new photo, right? These will be the pairings that we can easily just read off of our uh, picture that we took of the spread out packet. Okay, so that is the secret to it. I've only given you the high points, but the actual mechanics of the routine so that you can do it immediately, even if you're not 100% sure, okay, how does this work? Well, if you want to learn that, go to the channel, Absolute math magic. One good series to look at would be the improv card magic uh, because I talk about AMP structures, two cycles, and mirrored structures and give you many, many examples and activities to practice that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.